I think to Dan's point, I mean, obviously, I'm in a large corporation very similar to Dan's. We've done the same thing. We've leveraged a corporate VMO to to bring all of the products that are out there selling to us and all these different models and different pricing structures, et cetera. We finally woke up and found millions of dollars. Um, so that that's that's one approach. But, you know, I, I think Todd's point is is right, and I think we can – the cultural aspects of how we operate within the organization, not necessarily just with our team, but within the organization. So when you get approached by somebody in the hallway or you accidentally overhear somebody saying something and they don't know who you are, and it's a valid point, and then you go and find a way to fix it, do that about a dozen times, and then you suddenly figure out that people begin, first off, even the ones that know who you are begin actually talking to you honestly, which is very important. You know, you don't have to listen to them around the corner. But you can't always be after that huge case to change the company. You change it a little bit at a time, and it could be something extremely simple that you're in the way of one particular process that slows people down by a day. And when you actually can deliver something back to that, I'll use the analogy, you know, kind of the person that sweeps the floor, when you can remove something out of their way and their job gets more productive, you'd be amazed at what it does culturally to the people that are working every day when that person says, you know, he actually did something for me and it made it better. And so suddenly you become almost like a funnel. The more you do little things like that, you become a funnel and the culture you create is unbelievable because people will seek you out and say, hey, you know, I heard you did this, and it made this happen, and we're having this problem over here in this area. And granted, in a lot of these cases, they have almost nothing to do with IT. But because you're looking to try to help the company there, there's a lot of those opportunities that are there. When you get that culturally ingrained over multiple years, you really become an asset to the company, I think, not just the CIO. You're really trying to help drive a return, and you're trying to remove obstacles. And really, I think that's what we're all trying to do with technology is turn it faster and remove the obstacles from that turn. It is, uh, this is a, a great place to jump off into the last question, which will be the evolution of the role. It's five minutes after nine right now. Uh, we will conclude at 9.15 for those of you who are uh, thinking about the rest of your morning. Uh, we, um, as CIOs, if we go back and look at the, the DNA of CIOs, uh, they started out as data processing managers um, in a small closed room uh, way back when. Today, y'all are driving the, uh, the futures of uh, your organizations in your role as CIO. Where do you think the role goes from here? Does it become more integrated into the uh, to the operations, to the delivery of product and services to customers. Uh, what do you see in terms of futures for the CIO role? And uh, if you would please speak both to your company uh, and to CIOs generically. Todd, I'll start with you, please, sir. Yeah, uh, thinking about our company specifically, um, it has evolved from being more back office to what I would say is we have a seat at the table now. We're in the boardroom, we have a seat at the table, and we're helping the business drive decisions. So I actually had, uh, I can't remember the gentleman's name, but there was another former CIO who was actually looking for jobs as a COO because they were so ingrained in operations, they had that education and background. So I think we are getting close closer to that COO than we were before in, in pushing on, on, on operations. From a, from a Verizon Wireless perspective, my network, my product that we're selling in Verizon Wireless as we evolve the network is going to be IP-based. So uh, suddenly um, we're at the table again with helping develop applications that work on that network, and uh, I think uh, we'll, we'll participate in that evolution, and, and we're, we're a key part of that. So. Uh, I, I believe that is, is, is real key at, at Verizon Wireless is that, that now we're starting to play with a product. We're selling more than just supporting the back end and systems. So you're, uh, you're moving from the L to the P, to use uh, Mr. Hendricks' uh, there you go. analogy. There I'm you from go. the South. Everything yeah. has a story and an analogy. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Robert, would you uh, address that question, please, or the evolution of the CIO? <clears throat> 
I, I guess the, the I becomes um, either innovation, information, or some people say idiot. But, I mean, you've you got to be careful there. But generally, I think those are the directions. Uh, and I, I really, if, if you look, again, my analogy earlier about the way our next generations of workers are adapting to technology, our next jobs, if we stay in just purely the information space, is almost moving to an operator role. We're kind of watching things blink, okay, because the days of changing all this stuff and the way it to make it fit our business are probably going to change in the next decade. Um, so we really have to focus on the innovation. And to Todd's point, we recognize a lot of what's going on in the company, and we understand a lot of it at a very granular level. Um, our Achilles heel is going too deep in the boardroom. So we get asked a question. And depending upon the board member or the executive, we can go, we can go as deep as they want to go. Uh, and we have to be cautious about that. But I think our future uh, is probably on the innovation side. And that could be innovation go to market in Dan's perspective. I mean, he does this every day. It could be innovation uh, in what we're doing to run the company. How can we be more productive? I think really those are the two paths that we have in front of us. Mr. Darling. I'm still disturbed about the three-year life cycle of a city. <laughs> <laughs> it was in the notes. I saw it in the no, notes. Somebody told me at a meeting about uh, six months ago, and I just looked at him like, really? <laughs> I better get my resume out. Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> no. Um, you know, let me talk Turner specific uh, first. Again, being in the media space, the CIO, you know, again, it's it, probably they're going to be challenged day in, day out just to stay so in focus with What's new out there? I mean, what, you know, what are the social circles, the social networking, you know, cloud computing, all these nuances that tend to, you know, cycle and, and build themselves year in, year out in, in, you know, IT infrastructure and things like that. But just technology overall, you know, I think we need to be so in tune with. I talked to my son, who's 13, will be 14 here shortly, just about his life, you know, and the things that intrigue him, and the places that he goes, and what he sees. And I think that we have to be that in tune with what's going on around us, you know, so that we can affect change in the right way. I think we need to be not risk averse, but we need to be big time risk takers, you know, in this, in, in order to position our companies leading edge and to be the front runners, I think we, we have to take risk all the time, you know, and I think that's going to be part of our jobs as well. I also think that we have to reinvent ourselves, you know, in the way we, we think about things and the way we approach things. And we continually have to, you know, we, you've heard a lot about process. You know, Robert's talked a lot, a lot about process and, and, and you know, the, the improvements there. Um, but that's, that's a continuum, I, I think, you know, within any CIO world. You know, looking at the broader aspects of uh, outside of Turner, Again, I think all those aspects still apply, um, and I just uh, I hope this whole tenure thing is not right. Because... <laughs> uh, well, you were speaking about a lot being... of us out there on the streets looking for jobs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I think that uh, there is that balance uh, between tenure and risk taking that everybody needs to strike. Um, Mr. Campbell. Uh, Don Campbell, Virtual Management Technologies, IT. Those three-year guys. <laughs> yeah. So no, the question, uh, the question is, um, what uh, do these guys think about in terms of setting and managing expectations? You're, he elaborated on the point that a lot of historical CIOs didn't meet the bark or deliver, and that's where I joke that those are the three-year guys. So, any other? I, I think it's it's more so. Uh, you know, the, the things that we have to deliver on, <clears throat> you know, in my world, again, I mean, even, you know, even the product or the file-based deliver that we do from city to city, I mean, we've created for, uh, CNN example. In the old days, you know, tapes were shipped, libraries came in, a, a camera person would be out in the field shooting their, their product on tape. That tape would then go into a bureau. You know, it would be either stuck in his desk or or you know, 
hidden somewhere, and it really didn't get back to the mothership here in Atlanta. So we, we just got a snippet of what they wanted us to see. So we've created this whole workflow out in the field that is all now file-based. You know, we, they have a server there that immediately they come in, it sucks their media, basically it comes to the mothership. So now we're exposed to all these things. Connectivity between those cities became problematic because of cost, and so we had to leverage better ways and faster ways of getting that media to us. But, you know, so as we start to develop and look at expectations around IT-centric, and I, I can tell you that in the broadcast world, it used to be broadcast engineers and IT. It is now one because, again, we're delivering in the same space, you know, on IT-centric environments. So, again, our expectations around the broadcast world are exact. I mean, it's like going to the dentist. I used to joke, it's like, I get there at 9.30 for a 9.30 appointment. It could be, hopefully there's no dentist here. <laughs> but it could be, not, you know, quarter till 10, 10 o'clock, and then, okay, come on in. We can't do that in the broadcast world. We are frame accurate in delivery of product. And, again, that's the expectations that I think has been set for all of us, especially as a CIO, in what we deliver. It's got to be there. It's got to be on time, and it's got to work. Yeah. So. And uh, to your to your point, you take the point you take the pain in the first meeting you had with the CEO on what he's asking for. Hey, we do not. I mean, people wash out of our environment very quickly. If you if you set a date, you're going to hit that date. So uh, there, there's no room. So you take the pain in, in the in the first meeting, not in the last one. There you go. So it all devolves to what your mama said. Be careful about what you say. That's right. <laughs> um, I uh, would like to uh, thank our panelists. This has been an amazing presentation. Thank you, gentlemen.